Good day, brethren. This is part two of a series called Truth in Creation. Part one was about the life cycle of the dragonfly, and part two today is about the life cycle of the butterfly. So, today, let us examine the life cycle of the creature known as the butterfly. A seemingly simple creature, one that doesn't seem to play a real obvious role in creation. A creature who is certainly fragile and truly defenseless in and of himself. The odds are completely against this creeping thing that will one day fly. Even in its ability to fly, he is always in grave danger. However, God, the Elohim, he doesn't just make things for no reason. And all elements of creation, whether seen or unseen, no matter how microscopic or large, it matters not even if the technological and scientific instruments of man cannot detect it, measure it, or test it. All things are made by the Word of God and are functioning for His purpose, and we are all intricately installed into a system that directs our attention to a wise master builder. Amen. So, the butterfly, which is a strange name for this creature, of which various cultures around the world have different origins and reasons why they call this critter what they call him. But, allow me to bring forth some facts about the humble butterfly, and then we shall examine his life cycle and discern how God and his infinite wisdom has put within this fellow's existence the truth for us to behold, we will observe this truth and begin to apply it to our faith. We will again be empowered further to do the will of God in humility and patience, and God will be glorified. Sound good? All right then, here we go. The butterfly. There are many many types or species, as man calls them, of butterflies. Many different shapes and sizes and lifespans of these creeping things which will one day fly. The butterfly, which really is just its adult name, has compound eyes. That means he has thousands of individual eyes in one area, and they are situated in a way that they are all seeing at a slightly different angle than all the others. And he is somehow able to see many different things at the same time. And this is called by some experts, Omnivision. An adult caterpillar, or butterfly, eats by sucking up nectar from flowers. Whereas the immature butterfly, or the caterpillar, munches on leaves. An adult butterfly will only live as an adult for one to two weeks. Although some species of butterflies will hibernate during winter and may live up to several months. It is interesting to point out here that the entire life cycle of a butterfly is not long at all. It is said that from egg to adult, he will only live for about four weeks. However, there are some species where they can live a little over two years. For some of these species spend almost two years in their pupa or chrysalis, the cocoon as some people will call it. So the adult butterfly, as an adult, its primary objective is spent learning to fly and then finding a mate for to reproduce. It is driven to multiply as an adult. He or she will die very, very soon after that. The female butterfly will lay many, many eggs at one time. Although she may end up laying 500 eggs, she literally lays them one at a time. And she lays so many for the purpose that perhaps if she lays such a great multitude of eggs, the chances of having offspring are raised. Some experts have said that only about 20 of her 500 will make it. There are four cycles of existence for the butterfly. Obviously, the first stage is the egg. 
a mama butterfly will lay her eggs on the leaves of plants or trees. Each species of butterfly will lay their eggs on whichever leaf the baby will want to eat. For instance, the monarch butterfly will lay her eggs on the leaf of a milkweed plant, for that is the diet of a caterpillar of that species. The shape of the eggs varies also. Depending upon the species or the family of butterfly, some will lay round eggs, some oval shaped eggs, some will be ribbed. Her eggs are even smaller than a tiny sesame seed. Most species, most species eggs will hatch in approximately one week. Some though, like the monarch butterfly, will hatch in more like three to five days. Now, once it is time for that caterpillar to come busting out of the egg, he is about two millimeters in length. He is very tiny. He is able to fit on the head of a thumbtack, if you can imagine that. So this is stage two for a butterfly when he comes out of the egg. This is a very crucial part of the creeping thing's existence. For it is in this cycle or season of his life that this fellow, in order to become a butterfly, must prepare himself diligently to become what he is destined to become. He will be doing a lot, and I mean a lot, of eating, a lot of chewing, a lot of digesting and processing, a lot of growing and expanding. It is very interesting to point out a parallel here in this place for figuratively for the believer in Christ this is a crucial time in this parallel stage for him as well for once a soul is thus born that is when he is reborn when he is born again he must immediately begin to eat and chew and meditate on and imbibe the Word of God he will begin to grow spiritually and his capacity to house within himself faith and grace and the knowledge of God is and must be ever increasing so that he or she is growing by leaps and bounds. So, so much that he is rapidly shedding his old man and growing and shedding his old man and growing and shedding his old man and growing more and more. Yes, growing more and more is the theme of stage two of a butterfly's life. And thus, in this place, he is being prepared for the next stage of his purpose. This butterfly at this point is referred to as a larva or a caterpillar. When he is hatched, he will actually eat the shell of the egg from which he just broke out of. What a God! He lets nothing go to waste. For in this eggshell, he thus receives essential sustenance for it to grow with. At this point, this little guy is totally driven by a force that he cannot help but give in to, that namely, hunger. Does not Jesus tell us plainly, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be filled. At this point in the believer's life, he too, if he really has repented and been born again, will also be driven by a spiritual force, that namely, hunger. He will ever diligently begin to pray and read and chew upon and eat and digest the word of God like there is no tomorrow. He will begin to eat for there is a force inside him now that is compelling him and showing him that he must do this to survive. Did not Jesus tell us that we must eat his flesh and drink his blood, otherwise we have no life in us? Did he not explain to us that if we do eat his flesh and drink his blood, we will abide in him and him in us, and we will have life? if we eat. And he told us that his flesh and his blood, of which he speaks, is indeed his very words 
and his very spirit. So, as this butterfly to be continues to munch and chew and eat his food, he begins to literally grow out of his flesh. And he will actually go through a process called molting, where his exoskeleton, his outer shell, his outer man, reaches its peak capacity for that time, and he will literally, and he must, shed it, and he will literally split out of it in order to keep growing that he may achieve the size and weight to enter the process wherewith he finally becomes what he was destined to be. A larva will literally eat, 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 shed his flesh and grow some more. Eat, 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 shed his flesh and grow some more. He will do this <clears throat> between four and five times before this part of his life is over and he transitions into the next miraculous stage of his life. It is so that the caterpillar will literally grow to be 100 times the size of their birth, length, and weight in this stage. Although he will only agree, he will only grow to be approximately two inches in length. Now, it's important to understand something here as well, my friends. We too, like our larva friend, we also must be as believers constantly eating, chewing, meditating upon the words of God, our food for eternal life. And we must also be growing in our soul by leaps and bounds. The life of God within us should be ever increasing and growing and forcing its way out of us so that we are in cycles constantly shedding the old man, ridding ourselves of the old man. Our capacity must be ever increasing. It is so that we should be ever increasing in faith, love, long-suffering, humility, meekness, joy, peace, self-control, soundness of mind, wisdom and knowledge and understanding, holiness and righteousness ought to be busting out of the seams of our souls perpetually and causing us to grow. For you see, death could not contain the eternal life force of God in the grave. Therefore, it cannot remain contained in these fleshly bodies in which we dwell either. And our soul too must always be broken that we may increase our capacity to house eternal life within us. Just like our little larva friend, always growing, always doing what must be done to cultivate growth and transformation. If this is not the case in our life, we really ought to do something about it. It means there is a sure problem. If we aren't, it probably means we are not eating. We are not praying. It probably means that we are even eating the wrong things and wanting the wrong things, deceiving ourselves. So now this next stage of the caterpillar's life, the third stage of his life, is truly to me the most mysterious and amazing part. The caterpillar is now going to do the most amazing thing. He is going to metamorph into a butterfly. The life on the inside of him, that caterpillar, will tell him it is time now. He will then go and hide himself on the underside of a branch or a plant. He will hang upside down in the shape of a J. He is saying J for Jesus unto us, assuredly. And he will begin an intense process of shedding his flesh for the last time. His fleshly man and he will literally hang there in what is called a pupa or a chrysalis for approximately a week. It is in this mysterious, silky, fleshly shell of his transitional body where internally he will transform or metamorphosize into a butterfly. From the outside it looks quiet but a miraculous metamorphosis is occurring on the inside of that body. Tissue, limbs, eyes and organs, and wings are literally being formed 
out of the substance which he has contained in his body from the buildup of nutrients and proteins and the very life with which he has been munching on and building up in his body, you can see at the beginning of this process that the pupa is green and vibrant. But at the end, when it is time for the butterfly to come forth, that pupa shell, that thing that he was in is hard, lifeless, and transparent. All the life that was contained in the pupa before is now fully absorbed and made one with the adult caterpillar, that is, the butterfly. Brethren, this process for the butterfly can no doubt be likened unto something that we will go through if, indeed, we continue in the faith as long as we continue to eat the Word of God and grow and transform and expand in the life of God we too will come to a place where the Spirit of the Lord will say unto us, It is time. And we will be transformed in such a way that we are so deeply and obviously conformed to the nature of God and the will of God that we can really fly and soar in the eternal realm of the Spirit where all things are possible and we literally live and move and have our very being in Christ Jesus. However, we are never done until we die or the Lord comes back. I dare say that most of us in this generation are still in caterpillar stage two somewhere, still in dire need to be found eating diligently with such a drive, the word of God and such things. We like this butterfly, even like the dragonfly, will spend most of our life in these bodies on the earth becoming what we were destined to be. Now, I must point out the last week of the life of our friend the butterfly with his new purpose and his new drive. Now that our humble friend has bust out of his final shell, he will spend about three to four hours pumping up his wings with blood and learning to fly. When he becomes a master pilot, he or she will go forth now with one goal, one mission, that is namely, to reproduce. The female and the male butterfly, their goal in their last week or two weeks of life on earth is spent searching for a mate for to fertilize and to be fertilized, that this process can continue in another generation of butterflies. The adult butterfly will no longer eat like before. Now, he or she will eat nectar from flowers with something like a straw attached to their face. <laughs> How is this stage like the believer? Once the believer reaches the peak place of faith and conformity to Jesus Christ, he is now highly motivated and highly able to be used by God to put the true seed of Christ Jesus in the hearts of other human beings and God will use him to conceive and reproduce other believers and create new converts or disciples of the Christ and Lord Jesus. The very life of God will be put into another by means of spiritual impartation through repentance and remission of sin whereby he can be now born again by the word and spirit and the one who is born again will also thus eat the very word he was born out of. And the cycle ought and will continue thanks to God's sovereignty and providence. Well, I hope that today you have learned something valuable and practical for to add to your faith in your walk home with the Lord. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your souls. Peace be with you.